Go like that. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of questions, but one of them is more maybe will help orient all of us possibly because you gave a kind of overview of a history that you're looking into and I'm curious what part of it right is most resonant for you in terms of thinking about the present, you know, in terms of oh, that's a good one. I'm, I I have to realize I do a lot about social crime, about the law and where it came from, so like you know going back to putting the bastard and all that, you know, and how our rights have been usurped over a period of time, they've lost contact with the rounds, the commons and stuff like that. But it came from Kingswood. I mean, Kingswood was one of the first things that tickled my fancy, if you like. And that's, because um, I'm a Londoner, but I've moved to Bristol now. And uh, I read about them, um, got involved. As I said, I went to, I went to the records office and such like that. They just sprung up at me. I'm also interested in writing, actually, a bit of civil disobedience. I think it's good for the soul about it. You know, the moral economy and stuff like that, you know. But I, I think that's, for, for me, that, that's one of the big things. And over a period of time, you know, the, the time wage capitalism and such like, the way we've lost contact of our land, we, we, the, the enclosure acts and such like, we've moved into the factories, you know, the, um, the industrialization, the mechanization of our labor and how the, you know, the threshing machine could have meant that we only do a two-day week. But in fact, what we do is lots of people lose their jobs and one person does a five-day week, you know. It doesn't make anything easier for us. All it makes is um, you know, more money for the capitalists. You know? that, that sort of process ongoing. And it's how we address that. Um, another thing I'm really interested in is, is the English Revolution. You know, where the, uh, the start of printing presses, where people start to read the Bible for themselves, if you like. You know, I mean, I'm not religious in any stretch. I'm an atheist, but like at that time, you had to understand that you know the Bible was the, the big book. It was the book, and people started to read it, and it said that the earth was a common treasury, it should be held for all, and they started to question the ruling classes and their rights to hold this. That sort of stuff is what really floats my boat, makes me inside, it's sort of an echo. we are very good today. <laughs> you know, that's the sort of thing that really interests me, and I do think it has a direct link with what we've got at the moment. I mean, some of the things that Mr. Radical History have done when we were speaking last night, uh, we, we held a seminar on the minor strike, and then we had another seminar afterwards about um, coal, class, and climate, and about um, green, um, sorry, clean coal and the technology around it, you know, and, and we juxtapose those. So I suppose that's one of the ways you can bring it into the future, if you like. Another one is the enclosures and the uh, pamphlet at the back about brewing your own beer from nettles, you know, because the enclosure acts, they, they industrialised, they started to grow hops, made beer as we know it now. When in the old days we, we, we sort of got stuff from the fields, from, from the commons, made beer ourselves. You know, there'd been a cottage industry where somebody would have made the beer, we would all sat down and drunk the beer. You know, so, you know alienation labour, stuff like that. So I'm going on now. Anything else, please? Okay, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, I just have a, I have a question that uh, I am interested in this idea of the moral economy too, and just something yeah. that, the name, that you're talking about about is um, how I've got to believe that there's a much different relationship with debt and with the threat of the hangman uh, in, the, in the context you're talking about than like how we think about debt and like the uh, fear of dying today. And I just wonder if you have any like thoughts uh, you've come across or if you have any like ideas about what what that risk meant to like, a riser or to a coal miner. One of our next projects is, there's a lot of riots in English history where um, the rioters dress up as women. And um, I'm going to get, I'm going to answer your question by the going. And we believe there's several reasons, and Roger and I are going to work on this in the future. The Luddites, for example, the Rebecca riots, and there were times that the Kingswood miners were dressed up as women as well. There's a whole thing about the carnival, you know, coming out, you know, the fancy dress, the fancy dress riot, if you like. Some people think it might be that. Other people might, might have thought that, you know, around the moral economy, that the, the women used to go out as well. You know, it was like supporting the, the femininity of the, of the domestic. I'm not too sure about that. I think another reason is the militia would find it very difficult to fire on women. Oh, sorry, there was disguise. Disguise was another one, sorry. But the militia would find it very difficult to fire on women. So therefore, if they all dressed in women's clothes, the militia might fire higher. Now, what was the faults in hanging? I mean, we, we've done some urban hanging as well, and there's some people that stand on the scaffold and make brave speeches around poaching and such like, saying, you know, I wouldn't be here if I could feed my family. 
you know. And it is as basic as that, you know. I either watch my kids die or I get out there and do something about it. And at the end of the day, you know, it's a horrible death thing, you know, other than burning crap, so you know, I can't think of a worse way, you know. So I, I think I think at the end of the day it wasn't to tell, oh there's no way actually that's very interesting. Tyburn, where they used to have the hangings in London, yeah, big area outside Newgate Nick, sorry, Newgate Jail. <laughs> and I used to put them out there and, and they, it was a big public spectacle, I spent most of you were uh Red Green Bishop for Cow, like the public spectacle and such like, you know. And they'd hang pickpockets, for example, you know, people used to come up and lick it out of pockets. Now, it used to get big crowds, all sorts of people. They'd be ragamuffins selling apples and such like, you know, but they'd, they'd be the, the great and powerful coming there to see the great unwashed getting their just desserts as they saw it getting hung. But there was large instances of pickpocketing. You know, so there's someone being hung up there as a deterrent for having their pockets picked. And at the same time, other the rich were getting their pockets picked. So it obviously wasn't that much, much of a deterrent. I mean, there's also other things where there was riots at hanging. And there was also riots after the hangings because sometimes the, the dead were handed over to surgeons. A lot of our medical knowledge now is gathered from the medical profession who, who took the cavities after the hanging, opened them up. And like, you know, if your mate had just been hung, you didn't want to hand it over to the surgeon because there was issues about the sun and such like. Um, I'm going to jump a little bit to the pillory as well. Do you know the pillory, the stocks? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, thank you, it's beautiful. <laughs> what was beyond me for those? The stocks, yeah. So you stick your head in like this, and like, I mean, some of those are going to be nasty. There's, there's an incident in 1822 with a thief taker, which basically is a bailiff or a deputy you used to have in America, was in the pillory, and they threw all sorts of things, like dead dogs, cats, bricks. You could die in the pillory. There was also other types, I mean, uh, like suspicious pamphleters, or um, printers who would print like Thomas Paine or something like that would have the books burnt in front of them and then they'd be put in the pillory. And there's evidence of the crowds having the collection and clapping them like that. And the authorities didn't like that. And that was one of the main reasons they stopped public animals. Was because at times it, it could get a bit dodgy. You know what I mean? It was hard for them to act. Okay? Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. Okay, yeah, right. Just have five minutes, then, yeah. Right.